to the December 20th, last Sunday before Christmas, the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are still meeting um, by online instead of face-to-face -face because of the amount of COVID that is out there. We are being good citizens. We are following the advice of our Lucas County health people, and we're trying to keep one another safe. Christmas Eve service is also going to be online, and so we will be posting that, and we hope that you will watch that on Christmas Eve. So, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Are there any other announcements we need to make? See none. Call to worship or pray to
these things, and we pray that God's work will continue in us, lighting our hearts with love and hope and peace and joy for one another in this Christmas season. If you would join me in this prayer, I invite you to pray in your hearts as I read this prayer. God of hope, we thank you for this journey where we are drawn to God's light. At the end of it, God's promise is born into our lives as we journey on. Hope comes from the child, and our hope is dedicated to the child laid in the manger. May we kindle God's light of love within us. Amen. And now, in the, with the crash, I watched it a little bit last week, and I saw how nice it looked when I showed my little light on it. <laughs> so now we have Mary and Joseph up at the front of the crash scene. Still no baby Jesus in the manger. So we think about the angels that came to the shepherds. So here we're going to hang our angel. Appearing in the heavens. And here are our two shepherds. Now it could be that the shepherds could have been um, girls too. We know in the story of Jacob that uh, Rachel was a shepherdess. And also um, uh, there have been others in our history. So we think of the shepherds as young men or old men out in the, she out in the fields, but they could have been women as well. And so we're almost to the birth of Jesus. We have the, everything is ready. We are just waiting for the due date, which is just a few days away. So we remember the coming of Jesus long ago and in our hearts today. Some of them are, uh, one is Tom, 
who was still uh, dealing with cancer, and Laura, who had a procedure and is recovering. The Reverend Dr. Joy is still um, having a, a time with aging, and Sonia uh, has, uh, has the virus. She tested positive, so we want to pray for her and her mother. And we pray for those who are wrestling with the, the ongoing marathon struggle of depression. So we do think of, of, of everyone who is suffering in this way. And there may be others who are um, unspoken, and people are going through hard times financially because uh, jobs have dried up and, and uh, a lot of the money that was made in the economy through restaurants and things is not what it once was. So we pray for all of us in our church and in our community who are struggling uh, financially, emotionally, spiritually, in every way. And we pray for um, this Christmas, but really all of life, to be um, one where there is hope because there is love. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Are there, am I missing anyone? Good. All right, seeing none, let's pray and conclude with the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Spirit of God, we're not doctors, and, and we can't help people except that we can pray. And so pray we do. Pray that you bless the doctors and the nurses and the researchers and the people who clean the rooms and clean the equipment. We thank you for all the people who work to take care of other people. We pray for our sick and our troubled. We pray for those in our midst who are depressed and discouraged, for those who are stressed. We also thank you where we are loved where we are peaceful, where we are healthy, where we are well. We come to you each week as a mixed family, God. Some of us doing better, some of us having a hard time. So with love for one another, we pray that you bless us all. Help we who are doing well to help those who are struggling, and help those who are struggling to get along better another day. This day we pray. In Jesus' name. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When it comes to the offering, uh, people have continued to give and support the church, and we thank you. And there are people who are, have pledged, and people who still want to pledge, and we thank you. And uh, we're, we're carrying on, and we thank you. The offering meditation from Terry Kohansky is, hope means to put your whole trust in God.
helping God bless our gifts for those who need them most. May they be the symbol of hope and love we wish to bear into this world. In giving them, strengthen our hope as we anticipate the birth of all hope, the child, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The word is logos, or the coherence of all things, the logic of all things, the knowledge of all things, the togetherness of all things. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being that has come into being. What came into Him, into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. And that is a mystery, isn't it? If Jesus was walking around today, would you recognize that it was a special one? Would you see the similitude? Would you see the logos? Would you see the, the word manifest? Would you see the divine lived out in front of you? Or would it just be somebody? For some people, even a troublemaker. I want you to know that in his day, some people saw Jesus and said, wow, and other people said, so what? Some people saw him as special, and other people saw him as nothing special at all, just a Galilean peasant. And so it says in the Gospel according to John in the beginning going on, he came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. We think of Jesus as the Son of God, a child of God. And here John is saying that we too, in our own way, through this way of Jesus Christ, have been given the power to become children of God, the likeness of God, the divine manifestations of God's presence and connection in the world, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. So this is not a matter of what family you come from, or what gender you are, or or anything having to do with um, sex or the flesh, but it has to do with this divine forthcoming in us. Born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and live among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Now this Word became flesh, is God entering into the world, and salvation is being in this world, through this world, not escaping this world, but, but sanctifying and saving and delivering this world. Don't hate your own body. Don't think that there's something the matter with it. In the Incarnation, all flesh is shown as being a fitting home for the Divine. And don't think, and don't despise your house and your city and your country and this world, because it's not, get us out of here, but thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So the Christmas story is about coming down, coming into the body, 
coming into the world and salvation being something about here and now, not just someplace else, some other time. And so in Jesus Christ we see this mystery of the divine, of God. And it's so impressive that there are people who say to see Jesus is to see God. And people who say to see God is to see Jesus. And then other people say no. But there it is. Something about Jesus brought this experience of the divine to us. That God was living among us in Jesus Christ. That God is living inside of us as we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And God is working through us as his children. God joins us, God teaches us, and leads us through Jesus Christ. And so we are approaching the moment when we remember this extraordinary event, this mystery of what it is to be a Christian. And it has to do with that God is explained and understood through the birth, the teaching, the example, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. And so it puts our story in this greater story, so that we too, in following this way of Jesus Christ, can rise up or sink down beyond ourselves into the deeper story and find our lives redeemed in this way, truth, and life of Jesus Christ. So this Christmas, my beautiful sisters and brothers, children of God, it's different than other Christmases. You may not be with your family, and uh, you may be sick, and you may be worried. Lots of things may be going on, but my prayer for you is that the living Christ who still lives, the having been born Christ, who is still being born into this world, may be born in us, and the world may be redeemed and continue on the path of salvation and be better than it was until the day comes when God will wipe every tear away from our eyes. But that day is not yet. So this Christmas, may Jesus be welcome in your heart, in your home, and in your life. And may we continue his mission together. Amen.
children of God. May Christ dwell richly in your heart, in our church, in our country, and in our world. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards all humanity. I invite you to raise your hands if you would. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.